Good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome to Christ Church this morning. We are so glad that you are here. It is a holiday weekend, and we certainly appreciate all of you being here, those of you here in the Centrum, and those of you who are joining with us online. My name is David Donovan. I'm the Minister of Music and Organist here at the church, and it's my privilege to welcome you this morning to this early worship service. Isn't it great to have a little cooler weather? Even though it's overcast this morning, it's certainly much nicer to be um, out and about this morning. Um, Tim is off today. He is in Nashville, and so Ashley and I will be leading you through the service this morning. I'd like to invite you to stand and turn in the supplement, a uh, worshiping song, the one with the green cover, to number th uh, 3002. This is a piece entitled, Blessed Be Your Name, and you'll see the words as they prepare, as they're up on the screen, or you can use the song. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering though there's pain in the offering blessed be your name every blessing you pour out i'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in lord still i will say blessed be the name of the lord Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. The second song, the words will be up on the screen. This is entitled, Here I Am to Worship, by Tim Hughes. Here I Am to Worship. Two, three, and... Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. You're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Never know how much it costs to see 
Once again, I want to thank you for uh, uh, joining us for worship this morning. Those of you here in the room and those of you who are joining us online, we'd love to know where you're watching from out there in internet land. So if you would, during this time of greeting, just put in the, the um, message line there in Facebook where you're watching us from this morning. And the rest of you here in the centrum, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll greet each other in the name of Christ. Gracious God, we thank you so much one more time for being with us in this holy place. Too many times in life today, we get really, really busy. And this weekend, we're even celebrating labor as we take a day off for Labor Day. But even dur during our busy, busy times, we ask that you help us to find that quiet time, that small voice that speaks to us, to our hearts and to our minds. Give us ears to listen with intention so that we surely know what you are asking us to do. Again, be with us now during this time of worship. And as always, help us to feel your presence in our hearts and in our minds. It's in your loving name we pray. Amen. Those, those of you online, please tell us where you're watching from. And those here in the centrum, please greet each other in the name of Christ. I'm sure we have some visitors with us this morning. friends. Good morning. Like David said, uh, I'd like to welcome you all here to Christ Church in Charleston, West Virginia this morning. Whether you're here in person and you're joining us online, whether it's your first time joining us or you've been here your whole life, we're so blessed to have you with us today. Uh, first, before I get into the announcements, I just want to give my condolences to the West Virginia fans in the room. <laughs> I know yesterday was a tough loss for you guys, so... I feel for you. Marshall won, but that wasn't, well, we won't go there. <laughs> um, for our announcements this morning, we have rally day next week, and I just want to remind everybody how that's um, a big thing for the church. We've invited our friends and families from Piedmont Elementary School and our families from the Growing Place Upstairs and all around our local community. So um, bring a dessert for the cakewalk, bring something to share. I'm making hot dog sauce, and it's going to be a great time. But I do need some guys to help me next Sunday. After the 845 service, we're going to begin setting up outside. We have some tents to set up, tables and chairs to put out. So I am looking for some strong and willing people to help uh, get Rally Day set up so we can make it 
better than last year. If you're watching us online, we have what we call our trifold. This has our events in it. You can get to it at our website, ccumwv.org. But those of you here in person, it came with your bulletin. And I just want to point out that we have the um, feeding ministry at Weberwood. It started back again for students in need there. And <clears throat> Janet Flanagan has started... Um, kind of a back-to-school type drive for the growing place. And if you look on the back, there's a list of items and supplies that they need. And um, again, the United Methodist Men is in here, and there's all kinds of other good information for you. I do want to acknowledge that we are not doing communion today. I know typically this is a communion Sunday, but we will partake in sharing of communion next week for the Rally Day events. And that's all I have this morning, and now I'd like to invite up Miss Shirley because she's going to greet you guys about the assistance ministry. Good morning. Good morning. Extremely high electric bills have challenged our neighbors in need as they try to pay their bill and provide the necessities for their family. Last week, a mother of three preschoolers came for help with her electric bill. She had recently loved her abusive husband and was currently trying to find childcare so she could find a job. You helped her and she was extremely grateful. Please continue to support this ministry by placing a contribution in the offering plate, which will be at the door as you leave, or at any time with a so designated gift. All monetary gifts do go to the Utility Assistance Program. The Women of Christ Church also provide an additional ministry on Tuesdays. They give folks two hygiene or personal items and two household goods such as toilet tissue and cleaning products. Each week they post in the flyer, that, the email that comes out the middle of the week, things that they need. You have the opportunity to help with this ministry by bringing in those items at any time. Christ Church is truly blessed to be able to make a difference and serve as the hands of Christ for our neighbors when you support these ministries. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. From where my mom is preaching today, I'm taking over children's moments for her. So have you guys ever wondered why we have two ears and one mouth? <laughs> Most people say that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Today, I brought a mirror with me. And so we're just going to check ourselves out in the mirror, see what we look like. Now, the weird thing is, even after you look at yourself in the mirror, like two seconds later, you forget what you look like already. And so, James says that one of them is, <laughs> James talks about the whole body and like what it's for. 
One of them is to be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to anger. He says that staying angry about things make you mean and wicked. And that's not a great way to act. So you know how we said like two seconds later they don't remember how they look? It's kind of silly. Well, James writes that when we hear God's words and don't do something with it, we are acting just like that. God's words are going in one ear and right out the other. We should hear God's words and look for the place where God needs us to work and then do something. And we will be happy that we did. I really like the end of this section of the letter. James says that the real way to practice what we call Christi Christianity is to care for people. A man named Eugene Patterson said it in this way. A real religion is this to reach out to the homeless and the loveless and not to let the bad stuff in the world make you a bad person. Will you please bow your head for prayer? Amazing God, teach us to hear and do your word. Teach us to give those who feel helpless and to love those who feel in love. Teach us to find joy in giving our time and love to people who need it. Amen. Sorry about that. So for those of you joining us online, now is your opportunity to share your prayer requests. You can share them in the chat feature online, or you can message us if you want to send us a private message. Those joining us in person today had the opportunity to write down their prayers on a piece of paper as they came in today, and we're going to lay this on the altar for God. And we also have some prayer requests. Whenever the assistance ministry is meeting, um, we always ask them what their prayer needs are. What can we do to pray for them? And some of the people shared to pray for their family. We have others that one person says they just want to get their life back. You know, a lot of times um, families are just one problem, one disaster, one layoff from losing everything. And it feels like you're, you know, you're, you're losing your life and everything around you. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of pain in this. She just says she'd like to let, have her life back. Um, someone asks that they um, pray that they go in the right direction. Another one is praying, asking for prayers for their husband and their son and their family. It's hard for people to come to us in times of need and we need to be reminded to treat them with as much care and compassion as we can because we know they're hurting people around us are hurting all the time we may not see it but it's how you treat people it's your reactions with people share kindness with one another please join me for our prayer as we sing our prayer chorus this morning, it's by uh, Margaret Duro, who was a music teacher in the Los Angeles County Schools for years. And while she was a music teacher, she was also known as a gospel and jazz artist. And so this chorus, Give Me a Clean Heart, is the chorus from a longer song um, that's written in like a vocal jazz kind of style. So as we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer, um, let's sing this chorus, Give Me a Clean Heart. And we'll sing it through more than twice this morning, a few more times. Two and a three. Okay. Give me a clean Give me a clean heart. 
clean heart so I may serve thee. Lord, fix my heart so that I may be used by thee. For I'm not worthy of all these Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning in prayer, we give thanks for the blessing of rain in the region. We give thanks for the crops that it fed, for the animals that it nourished. We give thanks to you for providing what was needed, Lord. We also know with the good comes the bad. There were many in the region that had some flooding. Please be with the families that lost their things in their basements, memories that they had. Lord, our prayer requests are before you on the altar. They're as varied as we are, but you know each and every one of them. We ask that you comfort those who are mourning to give strength to those who are sick, to give guidance to those who are lost, and to bring peace to those who hurt. We ask that you help us to be doers of your word and listeners of your word. We ask that you help us to follow the example of Jesus. And we pray the way Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now our time of offering this morning. This offertory piece is entitled Lord I Need You by contemporary Christian artist Matt Morrow. <laughs>
Our scripture this morning comes from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave birth to us by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for human anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls but be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves for if any are hearers of the word and not doers they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror for they look at themselves and going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and preserve being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be a blessing in their doing. If any think that they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion is a pure, undefiled before God the Father in this, to care for the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself sustained by the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. So this reading today came from our lectionary, and the book of James was a letter that was written with Jewish readers in mind. Now, the Jews of this time were modest people who were being oppressed by the rich Romans all around them. James highlights patience and calls them to remember that the Lord will ultimately set things right one day. The writer of this book is believed to be James, the brother of Jesus, who led the early church in Jerusalem. He identifies the recipients of the letter as the 12 tribes which are dispensed, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel, who li- the 12 Jewish tribes that live outside of Israel. James is writing to the Jews to encourage them to grow in this brand new faith. He emphasizes that good actions will naturally flow from those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. If you haven't spent a lot of time in this book, I encourage you to read it. The book of James explains the necessity for believers to act in in accordance with our faith. How well do your actions mirror the faith that you proclaim? This is a question that we all struggle to answer at times. We'd like to think that we're good and faithful servants, that we're doing good works for God. But sometimes, try as though we might, we still fail. I think about the song, they will know we are Christians by our love. Think about what your witness is to others. Will they know you're a Christian by the words that you speak? Will they know you're a Christian by the actions that you make? Will your neighbors know you're a Christian by the love that you show them? Now, James makes two important statements in this piece of scripture. The first is to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. 
quick to listen and slow to speak. How many times have you been in a situation where you have found yourself listening to respond rather than listening to hear? If you think about it, this is how we're taught to listen in schools by our parents we have to listen to what our parents are telling us and respond with actions. Clean your room. Don't touch that. It's hot. We have to respond with actions at school and with learning. A lot of people are giving, given a few opportunities to grow up just to listen. Some children are never read to by their parents. Some never get the opportunity to sit and just have conversations with them. Listening is something that we have to learn how to do. And not having the opportunity to listen to those around us can really hinder our ability to listen to someone. Even as adults, we listen to respond. We want to be funny, we want to sound smart, whatever it is that drives you. We want to listen to hear what people have to say, but we seldomly do that. We have to be intentional when we listen. We have to be slow to respond. Two reasons for this is one, we're quick to respond with answers that are similar or anecdotes. We want people to know that we relate with them, right? The other is we hate silence. We cannot have another conversation with adults and allow for silence. It's called an awkward silence for a reason. We're uncomfortable with silence. We hate silence so much that in the current times, we have changed our speaking to fill silence. We are all guilty of the dreaded um. I know, I'm sure I've done that four or five times already this morning. I found myself a couple weeks ago during a children's message intentionally trying not to say um, but I ended up saying so probably 20 different times. We want to respond, and we want to feel the quiet. We hate silence, so we are quick to speak. We need to have time to process what's being said to us. We really need to think about how we respond. Our first instinct is to relate to their situation. We want to show that we understand, right? But we need to remember that no matter what the situation is, this is a unique situation for them, no matter the topic. We're not walking in their shoes. You may be comforting someone who's lost a job. Maybe you have lost a job yourself, and you tell them, yeah, I know, I've been there. But have you? Are you really listening to them? Do you know what else is going on in their life? Sometimes we forget that sometimes people just want to be heard. They're not looking for an answer. They're not looking for you to fix something or to make comparisons. They just want to let it out. They want to be heard by somebody who cares. We need to retrain ourselves that we don't always have to be ready with the answer or the fix to listen. The third part of this is being slow to anger. I think this one we comprehend a whole lot better. Doesn't mean we do it. But we do understand the concept. 
I'll admit, I have a quick temper sometimes. I have to remind myself not to get angry or frustrated. Most of the times, if you think about it, when we get angry or frustrated, aren't we overreacting? Now, even Jesus got angry. We're allowed that emotion. However, it's being slow to respond to the anger is what matters. So I want to let you guys in on a secret. I hate text messaging. I text message a lot, but I absolutely hate it. It's great for short, quick conversations like, hey, lunch is ready, or thank you, or, you know, we have youth tomorrow, don't forget. But some people have real conversations via text or email. We are missing so much context that we often become angry or offended by something that we read. We read our own struggles into it. I think it's safe to say that the number of misunderstandings between friends have probably doubled in the years that text messaging and emails have been around. We need to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. It sounds so easy to do, but man, do we really mess this up. The second thing that James points out in this scripture is for us to be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. James is the one that tells us in the very next chapter that faith without works is dead. He says, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. But this goes against so many other scriptures, doesn't it? In Ephesians, it says, For grace you have been, for grace you have been saved through faith. This is not by your own doing. It is a gift from God. It's not a result of your works. In Titus, it says, he saved us, not because of the works that we've done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. In Romans, it says, the works of the law, no human being will be made justified in his sight. I could go on. So who's right in this situation? The truth is, they all are. We can't gain our way into heaven with our works, nor can we earn grace. That's given to us freely through Jesus. So what was James talking about here? What he's trying to tell us is that if we have faith and we're followers of Jesus, then we will want to be doers of faith and not just hearers of the word. If we really and truly follow the teachings of Jesus, we'll become doers. If we love our neighbors the way we, be the way we love Jesus or the way Jesus loves us, we will be doers. We'll feed our neighbors. We'll care for those who are sick and are hurting. We'll share what we have with those who are without. We will care for those in need because that's what you do when you love somebody. It will be impossible for us to just sit on our hands while those around us are hurting or in need. James is explaining to us to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and Joe to anger, slow to anger as a preparation to be doers for Jesus. When we go out into the field of mission, we need to listen to the needs of our neighbors. 
we need to stop assuming that we know what they need or that we know what's best for them because we don't have all the answers. We also need to learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit as well. We need to be slow to speak. We need to remember that our words have power and that what we say has the power to both build and destroy, to heal and to hurt. We need to make sure that our words are good and helpful. We need to meet the needs of those we're trying to help whether it in the fix what we think is wrong. We need to be slow to anger. When going into the mission field, under, misunderstandings do occur. And not everything will go our way. We'll often find that we weren't right, that we don't have the answers, and that can be hard for us to admit at times. We may be helping somebody who disagrees with us on a plethora of issues. We may find ourselves wanting to argue with them. We may feel like those we are serving are being ungrateful. We may even get our feelings hurt. When we get angry, we need to be even slower to speak. Abraham Lincoln's Secretary of War, Edwin Staten, was angered by an army officer who accused him of favoritism. Stanton complained to Lincoln, who suggested that Stanton write the officer a sharp, stern letter. So Stanton did that. He showed the strongly worded letter to the president. Lincoln asked, what are you going to do with it now? Surprised, Staten said, I'm going to send it. Lincoln shook his head. You don't want to send that later. letter. Put it in the stove. That's what you do when you've written a letter in anger. It's a good letter and a good time for writing it, and it'll help you feel better. Now burn it and write a new one. Be quick to listen. Be slow to anger. We're not serving for us. We're serving as the hands of Jesus. We can't get to heaven through our works, but it's through our works we will share the love of Jesus. Amen. As a response to the word, thank you, Ashley, we're going to sing a song that's based on 1 Corinthians 13. Many of us know this song as the gift of love. Of course, 1 Corinthians is often a scripture that is read at weddings, but there's a lot of good wisdom uh, to take with us today. So if you would, let's stand. It's number 408 in our hymnal, or the words will be up on the screen. This is the gift of love. Two, three, and one. together. Though I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire and have not love, my words are vain as sounding
and striving so my love profess but not be given my love within the prophets to turn strangely thin come spirit Friends, as we leave this place today, let us be doers of the word. Let us be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. With the grace of Heavenly Father, amen.